हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू टीचिंग पाठशाला टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम एपोप्टोसिस एंड दिस वीडियो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द सी एस नेट स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज नाउ इट इज द सी पार्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ सी एस नेट आर मेनली यूज टू हैव अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ बेसिक प्लस द एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड कंसेप्ट सो इन दिस पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम बेसिक थिंग्स एज वेल एज दैट बेसिक्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू In our previous video, we have seen that what are the different genes that are responsible for the apoptosis inside an animal. And in this video, we are going to see that what are the genes that are responsible for the apoptosis inside the C. elegans, which is also known as a nematodes. In animals, we have seen that mainly the genes belongs from the B. C. L. two family. Okay, that is mainly the anti apoptotic proteins and the pro apoptotic proteins, and both the proteins are from B. C. L. two family. But here. there is an identification of total four genes that are responsible for the apoptosis in c elegans and that genes are cat3 cat4 cat9 and egl1 and second thing is that the human bcl2 protein and the worm cat9 protein they are supposed to be considered as a homologous protein okay because they mainly used to share only 23% of a identical sequence but then then also they used to consider as a homologous protein the first mammalian apoptotic genes that was cloned is supposed to be the bcl2 gene if you talk about the second point so here they have told that bcl2 gene can block the extensive cell death that is found in C, uh, cat9 mutant worm that means if suppose you have a, a worm and that ha that is showing a mutation in the cat9 gene okay and if you inject bcl2 gene into that cat9 mutant worm it will going to show a pathway in which you will see that there is a suppression of apoptosis pathway that means if the cat9 is absent in a cell and if we inject a bcl2 gene the bcl2 gene is going to do the function of the cat9 that is obviously the function of a suppression of apoptosis pathway because bcl2 is anti apoptotic uh, anti apoptotic genes in mammals as well as cat9 is also a anti apoptotic gene in a mutant and how they identified they identified it by mutating the cat9 and injecting a bcl2 if bcl2 is having a similar function uh, just as a cat9 it will going to show a same pathway that was followed by the cat9 in a normal condition so whatever the role that was played by cat9 in a worm the same role is going to be played by bcl2 in a mammalian cell that is the anti apoptotic function loss of function mutation is one of the best way to know that what function is going to be there with a particular gene okay because in the absence of that gene or in uh, in a condition when that gene is mutated that function will not be there in that particular organism so this is one of the best way to know the function of a particular gene by doing a mutation in that gene this is one of the most important slide of this video in which we are going to see that what analogous gene are going to play their role in what kind of organisms and how they are controlled so first of all if we talk about the analogous gene what does that mean okay so these genes are present in two different organisms but they are performing the similar function that genes are known as the analogous gene they are having a same function but in a different organisms if we talk about the c elegans genes you can see from the flow chart that cat9 is going to inhibit the cat4 okay and cat4 has the ability to activate the cat3 and this pathway is followed inside a c elegans that is a nematode so from the flow chart we can conclude that the cat9 is having a, any kind of a anti apoptotic property and that's why it is inhibiting the cat4 and this is also showing that as because the cat9 is inhibiting the cat4 that means cat4 is having a some kind of a pro apoptotic activity that means the cat4 is promoting the apoptosis pathway because maximum time the anti apoptotic factors they used to inhibit the pro apoptotic factors and that is what we are seeing in this flow chart that cat9 is inhibiting the cat4 but whenever there is an absence of a cat9 or inhibition of a cat9 at that time the cat4 will promote the activation of a cat3 and that will automatically lead to the apoptosis so it is also indicating that cat4 and cat3 are playing positively role due, during the apoptosis pathway so we have seen that what kind of a pathway is going on in the c elegans okay and now if we talk about the human the same function is performed by the different genes but the function remains the same so the cat9 function is performed by the bcl2 or you can say that the bcl2 function is performed by the cat9 they are the analogous gene that means they are they are different genes which are performing a same function in our different organisms so uh, bcl2 which is an anti apoptotic factor the role of the bcl2 protein is going to be played by the cat9 the role of the ff1 which is a pro apoptotic factor which used to promote apoptosis the role of ff1 is played by the cat4 inside a c elegans role of caspase9 is played by the cat3 in c elegans 
So if you see the node that is CAD4 which is playing a role of FF1 is a protease activating factor that cause a auto cleavage of the CAD3 precursor protein and this creates an active CAD3 that is playing the role of a caspase 9 protease that initiate a cell death. During the mitochondrial pathway, you have seen the role of FF1, caspase 3 and caspase 9 that how they are performing their function during the apoptosis. So sometime in net, they used to ask the question regarding this analogous gene and they mainly used to give a like, they can give a function or the relation between them and then they will ask that what kind of activity they are showing. Might be you will get the same flow chart of C elegant gene that how they are performing and how they are inhibiting each other. And then they will ask that what kind of activity is shown by each gene. Like CAD9 is performing the function of an anti-apoptosis, okay. CAD4 and CAD3 is performing the function of a apoptosis or pro-apoptosis. So you can get a question uh, on this topic in any way, okay. So you should be prepared that the questions pattern or the uh, content of a question can change but the concept behind that will remain the same. This is the schematic representation that how the different genes are playing the same function in our different organisms. So the same color portion is indicating the same function in our different organisms. Okay, the yellow portion is indicating the function of a pro-apoptotic gene but in a different organism that is one in a nematodes and second in a mammalian. So if we start from the yellow portion that is in case of a nematode it is EGL1 and in case of a mammalian it is a bid, BIM or other different genes. Okay. So, bed beam mainly belongs to the pro-apoptotic family, that is mainly the BCL2 family. So, they are performing the function of a apoptosis by acting as a pro-apoptotic factor or promoter of a apoptosis. So, the same function is performed by the EGL1 inside a nematode or inside a C elegant. And if we move to the next, uh, next step, that is the uh, performance of the CAD9. Okay, CAD9 is inhibited by EGL1. That means CAD9 is having a, any kind of uh, anti-apoptotic function. That's why this has been inhibited by the pro-apoptotic factor that is the EGL1. And in case of a mammalian, you can see that the role of the CAD9 is played by the BCL2. So BID and BIM used to inhibit the function or expression of a BCL2 in case of a mammal. And EGL, EGL1 is going to inhibit the function of a CAD9 in case of a nematode. If you move to the next step, that is the CAD4. So CAD4 is inhibited by the CAD9 because CAD4 is playing the role of a pro-apoptotic factor. That's why it, is, has, it has been inhibited by the function of an anti-apoptotic factor that is the CAD9. And if we talk about the mammals, then there is a presence of a FF1 in same color that is indicating that it is playing the role of the CAD4 or the CAD4 is playing the role of a FF1 that is the pro-apoptotic factor. The next activity is shown by the CAD3 that is activated by the CAD4. And CAD4 will only activate CAD3 when it is not inhibited by the CAD9. That means during the absence of an anti-apoptotic factor. So after the activation of a CAD3, it is going to perform the same function as the caspase 9 inside the mammalian. So the role that is play, played by the caspase 9 inside the mammalian system, the same role will be played by the CAD3 inside the nematode. So after the activation of a CAD3, it will lead to the apoptosis of a target cell. I guess the concept of this analogous gene is now clear to you that which gene is performing the same function in the nematode as well as in our mammals. The whole gene are diff totally different but they are performing a similar function that's why they are considered as a analogous gene. Now we are going to talk about the inhibitors of apoptosis. So apart from the anti-apoptotic factor there are some protein which used to inhibit the apoptosis process and these proteins are mainly the conserved proteins which used to regulate the caspase and the different immune signalings. You don't have to memorize the whole thing about the inhibitor of apoptosis but you should remember some of the terms or some of the genes that are responsible behind this. Because nowadays the question level of CSIR net is getting higher and higher and we don't know that in next attempt from what part they are going to ask a question. It may be from this part also, it may be from different part also. Okay, So we should get familiar with different terms that are necessary from the apoptosis path. IAPS is also known as a BIRCS and the full form of BIRCS is the BIR domain containing protein and it is a class of protein that has been characterized by the presence of a baculovirus IAP repeats which is mainly the BIR domain and it is a zinc ion coordinating protein protein interaction motif. So some of the genes are there or you can say that the conserved genes are there which has been transferred from virus to the mammals and they are so nicely conserved that they used to transfer from one generation to another. And, and the example of that domain is uh, like BIR domain which has been mainly transferred from the virus and now it is also present in the mammals. So that BIR uh, domain is responsible for the 
giving rise to the IAPS that is the inhibitors of apoptosis. So they are mainly the conserved domain that has been transferred from virus to the mammals and now they are playing their role by giving a protein-protein interaction motif. So if you consider a sequence of a inhibitor of apoptosis protein or IAPS, you are going to get a BIR domain in that. And that is the indication that this uh, protein is going to act as an inhibitor of apoptosis. If the apoptosis function is performed by a caspase and that caspase is present inside a yeast or plant, that would be regarded as the metacaspases. Okay, so metacaspases are mainly involved in the programmed cell death. Right now, there is a no I uh, like uh, inhibitor of apoptosis has been discovered inside the prokaryotes and plant. Okay. But if you talk about the yeast, there is a presence of one inhibitor of apoptosis protein that is the BIR1P. Till now, there is total of 8 known mammalian IAPs that is the inhibitor of apoptosis protein or we can also say it as a BIRCs because it has a conserved domain that is the BIR domain. You don't need to remember all these IAPs because like I can't say that it is important from the exam point of view. But sometime you may get one of these terms in your paper or in your question especially in the part C. So you will not feel like I have not seen this term or I am not familiar with this term. Because once you see, you can at least remember at the time of exam that yes, this term I have already seen. I have studied something about this. So might be you will able to attend some of its part. So if you talk about the IAPs, so the first one is the BIRC1 which is the neuronal IAP. Okay, it is present in the neural cell of a mammal. Second is the BIRC2 which is a cellular IAPs. Third is the BIRC3 which is a cellular IAPs. Next is the BIRC4 which is a X-link IAPs. Next is the BIRC5, then 6, then 7 belongs to the melanoma IAPs. And eighth one is the BIRC8 which is a IAP-like protein 2. So you should remember the functionality of the IAPs, what domain it is having, especially the conserved domain and how it is playing its role during the apoptosis. And it would be okay if you memorize one to two example of this IAPs because it will help you to solve some question if there is any question regarding this BIRC1 domain or IAPs. This inhibitor of apoptosis protein mainly used to function by blocking the caspase 3, caspase 7 and caspase 9. Because these caspases are helping the cells to travel through apoptosis pathway. But if we inhibit this caspase then there will be the absence of apoptosis and that is what they are doing that is the IAPs. They are mainly inhibiting or blocking this caspase so they can halt the apoptosis pathway. So if there is a presence of a IAP that is the inhibitor of apoptotic protein there should be something which you which will act just opposite to that that means the anti IAPs and it is mainly found inside a drosophila. The example of anti IAPs is the reaper, hid and grim. These three genes used to function just opposite to the IAPs. The IAPs that is present inside a drosophila that would be regarded as a DIAP1. If we mutate the IAPs that is present inside a drosophila, then there would be the activation of anti-IAPs like Reaper, Hid, and Grim. But if there is a function, uh, there is a mutation like gain of function mutation. That is the mutation that will lead to the gain of function that was designated for that gene. So if there is any kind of a gain of function mutation in uh, IAPs of drosophila, that would lead to the suppression of this anti-IAPs gene that is Hid, Grim, and Reaper, and that will lead to the absence of apoptosis. So if you summarize the whole thing, we can say that the IAPs are the inhibitor of apoptotic protein. So whatever the protein that is involved in the apoptosis pathway, that protein is going to be inhibited by the IAPs. And the genes or the protein that will work or act just opposite to the IAPs are known as the anti-IAPs. So IAPs is mainly inhibiting the apoptosis whereas anti-IAPs are enhancing the apoptosis it is progressing the apoptosis okay so in the presence of anti-IAPs there would be the uh, presence of apoptosis and in the presence of IAPs there would be the absence of apoptosis or simply we can say that the IAPs are anti-apoptotic and anti-IAPs are the pro-apoptotic proteins this concept is going to help you in solving the part c questions i hope today's video was useful for you and if this video really helped you then don't forget to hit that like button and if you are new to my channel you can subscribe my channel for getting more such videos on CSIR net. Thank you.